A partial government shutdown has not broken the stalemate in Congress. Speaker Boehner and his band of Tea Party radicals have done the unthinkable. Democratic leaders in Congress finally have their prize. The sticking point has been to pay or not to pay for the nation's health insurance reform law. Nobody gets to hurt our economy and millions of hardworking families over a law you don't like. Despite the impasse, that law moved forward today. We'll have the latest on the debate topping Fox 11 News at 9. Good evening, everyone. This is the first partial government shutdown in 17 years. And the seemingly stubborn gridlock in Congress has shown no signs tonight of being resolved. As we've said, the major holdup is connecting health insurance reform money with a new federal budget, a budget that was supposed to have taken effect today. The Republican-controlled House keeps including provisions to either wipe out money for the reforms or delay key portions of the law. On the other side, the democratically controlled Senate, as well as the White House, have continued to insist that neither of those things will happen. Tonight, Fox 11's Kelly Schlicht begins our balanced coverage. Day one of the government shutdown has come and gone, but the blame game continued. So once again, I urge House Republicans to reopen the government. We know the Democrats who shut down the government will yell and point fingers. And there is no compromise in sight. Democrats again accused a conservative Republican faction in Congress for the government shutdown, saying that group has used it as a last-ditch attempt to remove the money to pay for the insurance reforms. It's about the Affordable Care Act. So I urge our colleagues to see this for what it is. But the shutdown even has Republicans at odds. The House has been working trying to negotiate a compromise, and, and the pro problem has been Harry Reid and the President have refused to compromise. This is more a reaction against the Ted Cruz wing of the Republican conference, which has basically hijacked us over the last three weeks. House Republicans proposed three bills to keep parts of the government running. Those failed late Tuesday. But Democrats in both houses say when it comes to funding, it's all or nothing. Some of the uh, rabble rousers over here have said what they want to do is uh, Take little bits and pieces of the federal government, send something over to veterans today, parks tomorrow, maybe security agencies tomorrow, and the next day, and this will go on for weeks, but what won't get funded? Obamacare. The Speaker of the House says it's the Democrats who need to compromise. The House has voted uh, to keep the government open, but we also want basic fairness for all Americans under Obamacare. And with the House and Senate adjourned for the night, the shutdown seems destined for another day. And the members of Congress and the President don't have to worry about their paychecks. They're still getting paid. And a Fox 11 fact check finds congressional members get paid quite a bit more than the average worker. The pay for a rank and file member of Congress is $3,300 a week. In comparison, the average American worker takes home roughly $850 a week. Many members of Congress have said publicly they would not take a paycheck during the shutdown. That includes some in the Wisconsin delegation. Sixth District Congressman Tom Petri says he would turn his paycheck over to charity. His office would not say specifically which charity. Congressman Reed Ribble's 8th District office says he would also donate his paycheck to charity. A spokesperson for Senator Ron Johnson also says he would not accept a paycheck during the shutdown. The spokesperson says Johnson is checking into the rules, whether he can simply stop his paycheck. If he can't, he will donate the money. And a spokesperson for Senator Tammy Baldwin says she would also forgo her paycheck, but would not elaborate. 